Elevate TV, Advancing Kingdom Lifestyle. Wow, welcome to Equip. This is an amazing moment when we're going to engage the Word of God with you, wherever you're tuned in. Praise the name of Jesus. My name is Apostle David Joma. I'm going to be sharing with you from the Word of God. And I believe something special, something wonderful is going to happen as you hear the Word. The Bible says the Word of God is quick, is active, if you like it, is powerful. Glory to God and is able to penetrate, to divide us and even be able to help our thoughts, even our minds and our hearts. Praise the name of Jesus. Well, equip is a beautiful moment to bring the word of God to you, to equip the saints for the work of the ministry and be able to edify the body of Christ. So those of you watching from here in Kenya, uh, Africa, watching in America or uh, North America and Canada and other places in the world and Asia, you're welcome. God will bless you. Tonight and this day, whether it's morning or evening, we're going to be reading from Malachi chapter number 3 and I'm going to share some words from the scriptures right there and I want to talk about the matter of God and his servants. This is the relationship between God and his servants and I'll tell you why that is important. Now, I'm going to read Malachi chapter 3 and verses 16 uh, down to verse 18 and then I'm going to just keep running. Praise God. The Bible says, Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another. And the Lord hearkened and had it, and a book of remembrance was written before him uh, for them that feared the Lord and that thought about his name. And they shall be mine, verse 17, says the Lord of hosts, in that day that I, will, I make up my Jewels, and I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. And then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serve God and him that serveth him not. Praise God. I love the book of Malachi because this is an amazing uh, prophetic writing, just the last book of the Old Testament, preparing into uh, the church, you know, to hear God's message. And look, the scriptures, whether in the Old Testament or the New Testament, is good for our feeding, is good for our life. I know Malachi, every time somebody hears the book of Malachi, a couple of things come into place, especially chapter 3 uh, concerning tithes and offering. Well, but to me, the book of Malachi has uh, not only that subject, especially in chapter 1, has a lot to do with honor, you know, a father honoring the son. And, you know, that is something major that Malachi raises. Of course, the last chapter 4 has the whole matter of fathers and sons, and it's another beautiful matter, particularly the last two verses of the book of Malachi. But for our fellowship and study today, we want to look at chapter number 3, those verses 16 to 18 we just read, and talk about God and his servants. Now, a while ago, uh, maybe a couple months ago, I had this encounter and I saw in the spirit, uh, which was really a visitation from the Lord, and I saw the Father, our Father in heaven, coming down into a meeting. And he came into a beautiful hall and there were people that were scattered in places and you could see there were not many and there were gaps everywhere. It's like the picture of what we've heard because of the pandemic that has hit the world with social distancing and so forth and you can see scattered people. And the father, I could see in that encounter, I could see the heart of the father. The father was looking for people who could, he could use, people who could serve him. And as he came into the meeting and I could see his heart looking for people and I could see the people are not many. And after that encounter, I, I was in the presence of God and I could tell that literally God in heaven is still looking for a man he can use. Glory to God. And so let me share about that because God is looking for you. 
my dear listener and you that is tuned in here today i believe god is still in such i know isaiah i mean ezekiel talks about god searching for a man ezekiel 22 30 you know somebody would stand before him in the gap and of course jesus the messiah is the one who came and took that place as our advocate the gospel of john talks about jesus and of course the holy spirit standing in as our advocate as intercessor and one who speaks to us before the father but listen as servants i'm going to look at some characteristics of those kind of people that god is looking for to use and this will be a blessing there's a book i've written called the christ like disciple which you can find uh, on Kido or on Amazon and this book is uh, something that the Lord spoke to me a while ago also which is almost related to this and he said describe the holy spirit said to me describe what the 21st century disciple looks like and so i took the time i was in kampala uh, in another country called uganda and that's where uh, i was ministering and in the middle of the night at 1 a.m. and the lord was speaking to me and i wrote you know 30 characteristics trying to describe by the spirit how the disciple in these last days ought to look like and of course now there are 34 you can look for that book it will be a blessing to you but right here these are the kind of people that god is looking for and i'm going to share quickly uh seven characteristics right here number one if you look at these people who came together it is those who feared the lord those who feared the lord came together in fellowship so number one those who fear god i pray today the you that is listening to this word that you can consider the whole matter of the fear of god of course the uh, proverb says the fear of god is a beginning of wisdom and there's a little story a very amazing story in the book of genesis chapter 20 when abraham meets abimelech he was with his wife sarai and she was beautiful and he was scared what they would do to him and his wife so he said well this is my sister later on of course abimelech and his people you know he took the the woman uh, sara and that night god showed up to abimelech said you are a dead man you took somebody's wife that man is a prophet you remember that story And then later Bimel comes to Abraham and asks him what did you do I mean one of our men would have laid with your wife and look at what Abraham said he said I did not know that the fear of God was in this place wow I tell you God is looking for a people that have that reverence of God it's not a kind of fear to be scared and run away you know because like you're going to be burnt no it is the reverence and that awe and that you know devotion and that you do not want to do anything that is out of line with God's word as i speak to you right now because i believe every time the gospel and the good news of christ is preached in the power of the holy spirit it happens so i pray right now that the holy spirit will overshadow you and come upon you right now and begin to uh, deposit upon you the need to have the fear of god and the spirit of god will take over your life and bring you back to want to be the kind of man and woman that has the fear of God glory to God there are many great men stories of people in the bible who walked with God and guess what they were righteous men and they feared God so that's critical and i see also another characteristic of these people right here who are coming into fellowship they related you know the bible says uh they spoke to one another often that means they did this over and over again heaven is always looking down to look for a people within the church and the body of Christ all over the world a people who can relate with one another glory to God the whole matter of relationship is so important to God because the relationship mean everything in the body of Christ listen christianity is more relational than organizational wow we thank god for the institutions and the administrative structures that we are put in to help the whole body of christ to operate the way mass operate but listen to me the relationship that organic life within a fellowship of believers is so powerful is so great and this is what god is looking for i want to urge you to be a relational person close to god you need that characteristic to be a relational person look why many people don't want to relate with others is because they are wounded others are hurting you know they were wronged they carry offenses they have bitterness has taken roots and if you read the book of hebrews you can hear the root of bitterness defiles the people and so forth i pray today that god can heal your heart and make you so loving glory to god and 
put this value and principle and characteristic in your life that you want to be a relational person and you therefore got to carry the love of God you got to love people and have mercy and compassion on them so that you can be able to reach out and stretch out your heart and life and ministry and resources and whatever you got everything associated with you to be able to reach out to other people Jesus told his disciples if they love one another then the world will know God hallelujah it's our love and our relationship and fellowship praise God when the early church was put in place listen to me Acts chapter 2 Bible says in verse 42 they gave themselves to four things one of them was apostolic doctrine and the second one was fellowship that fellowship is koinonia this is a deep word that we have fellowship with God and we are fellowship with one another glory to God if you find somebody who is struggling relating with others is because either he's walking uh, in sin or walking in so many heartaches and woodings in his life and is running away one time a woman of God came to my office and shared with me all the troubles she had experienced in ministry and all the difficulties and what things you know what had happened and how things didn't do things right to her and so forth and as I looked at her and listened to the story the Holy Spirit used a very funny phrase and very interesting scripture he said take this one take this one to ICU that's intensive care unit and I told the woman look you are so sick you don't need to step in the pulpit you need first to be admitted in a spiritual hospital in an intensive care unit glory to God and they can put some probably oxygen mask on you and you can begin to breathe in and begin to receive ministry and I told her look you need to sit down and receive ministry of the Word of God in such a way that that intensive care from a man of God and a, a who will love you and cover you and speak and share wisdom and give you the word of God to pray for you and, and assist you in every way. Then after some days you can move from ICU to HDU, high dependency unit. And later you can move from that to the general ward. And later you can be discharged from the hospital maybe after some months. And then maybe the doctor can say be coming every month for clinic to reveal how you are doing spiritually your health. And many people in the body of Christ right now listening to me probably are so sick and wounded and hurting. I want you to know in Luke 4 18 when Jesus said the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel, the good news to, uh, to the poor. That was powerful. But there was a second thing Jesus' mission uh, included. Healing the brokenhearted. I'm telling you the truth. So after the gospel of Christ is preached, the Lord is willing to now reach out to those who are brokenhearted. So that then when they are healed, and when we are healed in our hearts, then we can be able to relate with others and fellowship with others in the body of Christ. Because let me tell you, standing alone will not help you. Making declarations, I will never, never come into fellowship with anybody. I just want, want to work with God will not help you. Because God has positioned uh, us to work within the body ministry. Praise God. And that means many parts. So this is a second characteristic. And thirdly, they uh, give themselves to unity they were united one with another because those you relate with you can just not just come and greet and go but rather move a little bit deeper and embrace the principle of oneness unity and oneness praise God if you read the scriptures particularly in Ephesians chapter 4 you will hear the way we need to endeavor to unite with the body of Christ and particularly the bond of peace look we have one God, Father of all, and we have one Lord, one Spirit, one calling, one hope, one baptism, glory to God, one Spirit, hallelujah. And we've been called to operate in oneness. And I like the principle of oneness because these kind of people that God is looking for to use are people, number one, who fear God, who are ready to relate, number three, who are ready to unite and operate in the principle of oneness. Look at Psalms 133, very famous psalm. It says, how beautiful, how good it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. Praise God. The word brothers there, or brethren, is not just individual people only, but it's also the tribe. The tribe of Israel were 12. How good it is for those tribes to 
uh, dwell together. That means that Hebrew word, therefore, brethren there, is actually tribe. You know, when you expand that word in the roots, you discover is a whole aspect of tribe. How good it is for this church and this congregation, this fellowship, or this family and this family dwelling together in unity. That oneness is amazing. The Bible says in the Acts of the Apostles, when the church was born, that they had all things in common glory to God. And this is a principle that God always loves to use to bring ministries, families and individuals and nations to another level. Glory to God. If a family is united, they can do exploits. They will do exploits. When the church congregation is united, they will do exploits and they will do great things for God. I call upon you by the grace of God that you consider that whatever God has called you to do on the earth, there is someone else God has also given a similar call. And there is someone else that God has given a similar call. Some are in different ages, different generations, and so fathers and sons, and uh, probably third generation. And God in this season right now would want to bring you into a company of people that you need to link in oneness, people that are in probably different generations. May God give you the wisdom and open up your eyes to see that what God has told you to do on the earth, you will do it in the company of others that God has given you. Well, in Acts chapter 4 verse 23, when Peter and John had been beaten and harassed and warned not to preach this gospel, the Bible says they ran after they were released and warned not to preach. Of course, in Acts 4 20, Paul had said we cannot, I mean, Peter had said we cannot, but speak the things we have seen, things we have heard and, you know, we, we, we must speak glory to God. Of course, in that chapter 4 verse 13, they saw the boldness of Peter and John and they took note. These men are learned and educated, but they have been with Jesus. And so later on when they were released after harassment and threatening, the Bible says in verse 23 of Acts chapter 4, they went back to their own company. Glory to God. You need your own company. In Acts 13, we see Paul, uh, Barnabas, you know, and we see certain prophets and teachers, Manain and Simon, you know, and so forth. They came together praying, fasting, ministering to the Lord, where the Holy Ghost spoke to them and said, separate to me, Barnabas and so for the work that I have for them, glory to God. It is in the context of oneness that God is going to unleash us in these last days to be a blessing in the world, glory to God. And so I pray that you will link up by the leadership of the Spirit to operate in oneness, hallelujah. Here in Malachi chapter 3, the Bible says, The Lord hearkened and had it and he took, and a book of remembrance was written before him for, uh, for them that feared the Lord and those that thought upon his name, that they shall be mine says the Lord of hosts in that day that I make them my jewels and will spare them as a man spared his own son uh, who served him and you know and so forth and so forth now this man that God is gonna use even from other places in scripture must be people who meditate on his name that means they honor his name that means they are people of character you see when Paul talked about Timothy's son he said you have known his proven character as Paul was talking to the Philippian church concerning Timothy, his son, he said, you know his proven character. Look how a man or woman of God operates and how you pattern yourself and how you live without godliness. Other people will know. In fact, when they were appointing deacons in Acts chapter 6, and when we look at the characteristics and qualifications of eldership in 1 Timothy chapter 3, you discover the whole matter of character is huge. And especially with good report of those who are outside. Glory to God. And so I'm urging you to consider that in case you are struggling with sin, in case you are struggling in your life, Hebrews chapter 12 says, And since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every sin and every weight that so easily beset us. Glory to God. There are weights and sins. And look at your entanglement. If your heart has been entangled and is you know, having things tugging onto your heart and leading you to things that are not godly. As you hear me right now, may the grace of God be released and bring you to a place of freedom and you make up your mind you're going to live a righteous, a holy life and that your character is going to be the godly character, the kind of men and women that God is looking for on the earth. Psalms 15, Psalms 24, who is this who can ascend to the hill of the Lord? Glory to God. Is he who has an upright heart? Look, may God make you a godly man, a godly woman, a generation that 
fears God, a generation that is relating with God and men appropriately, a generation that is connected with the vision of God and what is you know, in the hearts of our leaders and we are in oneness, glory to God. And therefore our character is stable and we are strong, standing firm on the word of God. These are the kind of people God is going to use. Listen to me. These uh, people that God is going to use are those that are ready to serve him. You see, as we design between those who are serving God and those who are not serving God, we must be a generation of those who are serving God. Service is a great principle for God's servants. Oh my God, we are here to serve you. And I pray through the media channel that I'm coming to you right now, that I'm able to serve you with the word of God. Glory to God. It takes much energy, much prayer, much study. Service. God is looking for people to serve. What does it mean to serve? It means to minister. It means to add value. It means to uh, aid. It means to help. Glory to God. May God cause you to come to a place where you're able to aid others, you're able to help others, you're able to serve them, you're able to minister to them, glory to God. First Peter 4 verse 10 and 11 says, for those who minister, minister according to the ability which God has given you. For those who are given to speak, speak as you're speaking the oracles of God. And those who are given to serve, serve according to the gifts and abilities God has given you. I pray that today God will not lack a people to serve him. I know COVID and the pandemic and the troubles of this world has pushed many people online, pushed people back to the house, pushed people away from the general congregation of God's people. Listen, but we still need to gather. We still need to get back together for you cannot baptize online. You cannot, you know, even fellowship with people you know, online from a distance. There's a synergy and the power of corporate prayer and corporate fellowship that is necessary. The Bible said in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 and 25, we must keep provoking one another to good works and not neglecting the assembling of ourselves together as the habit of some is. This pandemic has caused people to have this new habit. They don't want to gather and congregate and assemble with God's people. Look, service is best when we are in the context of team ministry, for Jesus sent them two by two, glory to God. And when Jesus gave the commission to the disciples, he gave to the 12 as a company, glory to God. In Luke 22 verse 28, he said, look, you are those who have stood with me in my trials. Therefore, I bestow upon you a kingdom, glory to God. So he gave them an apostolic commission and made them an apostolic company, a people that are ready to go and serve the world, glory to God. And service is a whole subject. We can talk about it in the future. It is so wide. Look, even as an individual, you can find a child you can serve. You can find another person you can serve. The youth, young people you can serve. The older people you can serve. Let's serve the Lord, glory to God. Arise and shine, ladies and gentlemen, and in these last days, this declare I'm going to be in the service of the Lord. And then of course, two other things before I'm done tonight. I'm going to say that it is those who are able to discern. Discernment is a critical gift. It's a critical critical gift of the spirit in first Corinthians chapter 12 we have nine gifts of the spirit one of them is discernment of spirit this is a dimension we need in the body of Christ the ability to know not only what the devil is doing but also to know what God is doing what his angels are doing what his presence is coming to do and design what the power and the move of the Holy Ghost is doing within a congregation within a family within a company we need a place and you know, wherever God has placed you. The spirit of discernment, I pray that this same spirit of discernment will rest upon you today in Jesus' name, that you'll be able to know. Look, when Samson, I mean not Samson, but Solomon, the son of David, when he took up the leadership, he had a dream and an encounter with God and he was asked to pray and ask what he need. And he asked the Lord in First Kings chapter 3, verse 9, he said that I may have a discerning heart. So discernment is having a discerning heart that is able to know between good and evil. Glory to God. May God give you that ability to design. Here Malachi says that we shall be able to design between the righteous and the wicked, between those who serve God and those who do not serve God. May the spirit of discernment come upon thee. And finally, these require the characteristic that they were righteous. Glory to God. We have to know these are the righteous people and these are the wicked. So the righteous, they are in service. They are positioned by God in the kingdom. And one of the nature of their life is that they are righteous. They have a right standing with God. Not only that, but they are doing stuff according to the word of God. They have patterned their life according to the word. And therefore, 
they are righteous. They have been justified freely by the grace of God. Romans chapter 5 verse 1. They have been born again. They have been declared guiltless. The blood of Jesus has washed their sins away. Glory to God. They have a relationship with Christ. Hallelujah. And because they have a relationship with Christ, they have become the righteousness of God. What Jesus did on Calvary Hill is what had made them who to be. Look, we all come from different cultures, tradition, uh, and all idol worship and all manner of wickedness in whatever we were born and came from. But when we met Jesus and he came into our heart, he changed us and we became sons of God. And today the Bible says that which is born of God overcomes the world. And this is a victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Oh my God. Time is not on my side, but I want to declare you can be a righteous man of God. You can be born again. You can know Jesus. You can have Christ in your soul. And you can decide, I'm going to follow Christ, follow his word, his written word, and my life will be patterned according to scripture. And guess what? If that is your desire, I'm going to pray with you right now. Glory to God. Well, I wish we had all the time, but I'm here going to pray with you right now. And trust God is going to make you a righteous man. Never forget, God is looking for a people he can use. People who have a fear of God, people who are relating one with another, people who are embracing principle of oneness, people who have character, God the character, people who are ready to serve God, people who are developing discernment, and guess what? People who are righteous before God. I'm going to pray with you right now. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for this, my viewer today. In the name of Jesus, the name above every name. If somebody is not saved, be saved, be forgiven. Be washed by the blood of Jesus. You can confess and tell somebody you are ready to receive Christ. And I pray with you right now, in the name of Jesus, may you become a servant of God. One who is ready to walk with God. God with you and you with God. Hallelujah. Where he will say, you are now my son. You are now the one I'm going to preserve. I'll be back with this message next time. May God bless you and keep you and watch over you. Glory to God. My name is Apostle David Juma. You'll get to see the intros and outros. And may the Lord bless you as you link up with me on YouTube and on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. And may the Lord bless you as we keep in touch. The kingdom is advancing. This was equip a moment to look at the word so that we can be prepared for the work of the ministry to advance the kingdom. Shalom. God bless you. Bye-bye.